Hey guys, welcome to another video for the POCO X3 Pro, also known as YU and Bhima. Now today we are talking about an Android 11 based ROM that is Havoc OS. Now this ROM has had an update that is version 4.10. I've installed it since this morning. We've run the benchmarks, I've charged it, discharged it and here's our quick 24 hour review in which you get to decide if you want to use this as a daily driver or not. But before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other, so join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kalash, let's get going. All right, so first things first, what do we have here? We have Havoc OS, the latest version based on Android 11. The moment you boot into this ROM, as always, as with each and every custom ROM, you get a very, very clean, pixel-esque, pure Android sort of a look in which you have the Google search bar at the bottom. This ROM comes with Google Camera Go, so that is always a good thing. That means you have something better than the very basic stock camera that is supplied with some custom ROMs. So you do have Google Camera Go over here. This ROM does not come with a lot of applications or any bloatware at all, but it does come with a ton of customization, which is always a good thing. Now to the left, you have Google Feed, as you can see over here. And this is my favorite part. If you have Google Feed running this fluid, this smooth, it is really, really going to be interesting to use in day-to-day -day life. And that is what makes this ROM even more amazing. Now, if you talk about the recent panels over here, they are fast and smooth as as well you do have the screenshot option and then if you go again you have the option for example as you can see over here share edit delete you have these three options and then you have the lock option as well that means you can lock the app in memory this is a feature which I don't see in a lot of custom ROMs if you click over here you have kill free form that means you can create a free form window of this particular app which is another neat feature and you also have one more option of split screen which works absolutely fine so as you can see over here i have camera and then you have split screen so let's see here yeah camera is working in split screen that's a good thing right so and just see the transition of split screen multitasking it is working really really well and there is no lag no stutter whatsoever in the entire ui that is something really really neat now at the top over here you have the quick tiles which work absolutely fine and you do have a ton of them you have things like screencast caffeine compass cpu info heads up kill application sleep mode sound search usb tethering vpn I don't see the FPS info tile over here. That would have been great if they would have added or baked that into the ROM. Now, a small thing that I'd like to mention over here, today morning or yesterday, you know, we released a video for K20 Pro Havoc OS in which I did have a couple of bugs. And later I was informed by one of our subscribers that the 4.10 version of Havoc OS is following the automatically building method. That means bots are building these particular ROMs. And that is the reason this is an initial thing. And there might be some bugs which will be ironed out later so you can go ahead and downgrade to 3.9 i don't really see any bugs with this particular rom but yeah the bugs were there for the k20 pro now getting back to havoc os for the poco x3 pro you do have a lot of quick tiles over here you have the edit option and then you have the automatic or manual brightness and you have the settings icon as well. Now, as I said, this ROM doesn't boot with a lot of bloatware. And if you go to settings, you will see that you have a launcher which does have a lot of customization. So moving on, you have app drawer, you have grid, you have icons, you have gestures, and then you have about in which you come to know that this is the shady launcher. Now let's see what the ROM development team has to say. This is Havoc OS official ROM OSS. This is basically based on OSS vendor. The version is 4.10 official and it is Android 11 and it has been last updated on the 27th of October, 2021. Now you have the source change log over here, which I'm guessing will be very, very long. Let's quickly have a look over here. That's a lot of changes there. Then you have the screenshots, you have XDA page and you have the support group as well. Suggested firmware is 12.5.2 global or greater. Safety net passed out of the box. SE Linux status is enforcing. Both vanilla and G apps builds are available. 
that's everything about the rom now let's go ahead and continue talking about our 24 hour review now as you can see over here it's very very smooth very very fluid it does come with google camera go as i mentioned earlier and all the features in google camera go are working another neat thing that i'd like to mention over here is the app icon animations just see how smooth how fluid these animations are and they work really really well there is no stutter whatsoever that you will see that is the beauty of android 12 whenever an android version matures especially custom roms it really really feels amazing this stability this smoothness will make you feel that you know this rom is so much better than mi ui well trust me it is now let's quickly dive into settings because that's where a lot of magic for this particular rom is happening first let's go to about phone let's go to the android version you do have the october security patch you have se linux status enforcing so your security is taken care of the build date is the latest and the kernel that we are using is the mochi kernel how does it perform well we will go ahead and see that in the benchmark numbers right now moving on the important factor of havoc os is the configuration center but before we get in there you do have your basic wi-fi options which are available they work absolutely fine you have things like forget disconnect you can also share this wi-fi network and as you can see i am connected to the 5 gigahertz network that means 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz are working absolutely fine now moving on you do have hotspot and tethering and you have mobile networks and stuff which work absolutely fine i've not had any issues with the bluetooth connectivity as well now the moment you go to configuration center now the reason this is significant and important is because you will see that you have a ton of customization like status bar quick settings lock screen ambient display buttons and navigation gestures notifications battery saving screen media miscellaneous and then you have the about option as well now we will cover this not in depth but you know from the top whatever we can see quickly we will do that because I don't really want to make this a 20 or 25 minute video and bore you guys. So if you go to the status bar customization, you have clock, you have the logo option. So you can have the Havoc logo over here. As you can see, you have the logo which appears and disappears. You can double tap to sleep. You can enable network speed as you can see over here. And then you have icon style. So you can select the icon style as you can see it keeps changing real time the battery percentage would be next to the icon you can go ahead and enable the battery bar and then you have these status icons which you can enable and disable and you can enable notification count as well now moving on you do have the option of quick settings wherein you can go ahead and set a quick pull down as you can see over here to the right and to the left you will have notifications so that is something really neat now you have things like battery estimates show estimated remaining battery life next to the icon as you can see over here until 7 pm so that's until tomorrow evening because it has been giving me excellent standby times you can add the columns you can you know play around with the settings icon auto brightness icon running services icon and edit icon now moving on you have the lock screen customization you can prevent accidental swipe double tap to sweep status bar quick settings and charging info now, apart from this, you do have buttons and navigation in which you can select the system navigation. You have the option to swap keys, wake device, answer call and keyboard cursor control as well. Now in notifications, you do have edge lighting in which you have further customization over here. Show on AOD, show always, hide AOD content. Now remember, always on display is going to be a little sensitive on this particular device because this is a LCD phone and yeah, this phone comes with the LCD panel and it will eat up your battery life. Now, you do have your battery saving options including block sensors over here. And if you go to screen, you have used framework values and those basic options. Moving on, you have some customization for media as well, which is really, really neat. Under miscellaneous, you do have your advanced gaming mode, which works really, really well. And you can go ahead and add apps at your will from over here. You do see that I have added the benchmark applications. And if you go to about, you have all the details, all the links and connections to their social media and other profiles for the Havoc OS team. Right now, that's everything about the customization of this particular ROM. Now, as we move in a sequence towards things that really, really matter and towards the end, we will have benchmarks and, uh, you know, the multiple things that should matter to you in a daily driver ROM, we will talk about that. But first, let's talk about the battery life over here. So if you click over here, 
surprisingly it says battery usage data isn't available i don't know if that's a bug or not that might be but it is nothing that is a deal breaker but i did have one percent of battery drain in four hours of standby so that is excellent idle drain you do have thermal profiles over here so you can go ahead and change thermal profiles as per your convenience you have your battery saver you can reduce the refresh rate and stuff like that you do have your extreme battery saver as well you do have charging LED, adaptive battery, adaptive charging. You can enable or disable that feature. And the last full charge was five hours back. Screen usage had just been 18 minutes and the battery temperature is this. Now moving on, you go to the display settings in which you have all the various options. You can set boosted colors and this preview changes real time. So that is something neat. You can double tap to wake. You do have your option of refresh rate. So minimum refresh rate is 60 Preferred refresh rate, you can set it to 120 and maximum is 120 over here. Now, apart from this, you do have sound customization in which you have all the various basic options, but you have clear speaker and direct sound enhancer with hi-fi, which works absolutely fine. So you should have a good experience as far as audio is concerned as well. Under security, you do have face unlock, you do have app locker, and you do have smart lock and fingerprint unlock. All of them are working absolutely fine. You can unlock the applications using the fingerprint lock and you can unlock the applications using face unlock as well, right? As you can see over here, unlock timeout and things like those. Now moving on, you have digital well-being and parental controls, you have Google customization and then under system you have some basic customization options. Now that's everything about customization of Havoc OS and my overall opinion about this particular ROM. For though Poco X3 Pro has been really amazing because I've not had any issues, I should go on to say that DRM Info clearly states that Widevine L1 is working just fine. If you talk about safety net, it passes out of the box so your banking applications are no problem at all. All. So the charging speeds are pretty decent just like stock ROM. It's, it's good charging speeds. It's amazing battery backup. Now let's talk about the important part that matters to all of you. Let's talk about the benchmark numbers. So the first thing that we will look at is the CPU throttle test. As you can see over here, average score was 182,560 GIPS. Pretty decent CPU throttle to 91% of its max performance. Now let's go to Geekbench over here real quick. Now, if you go to Geekbench, go to History, 765 single core, 2589 multi core, not the highest, but a very, very solid score. And if we talk about N22 benchmark over here, as you can see, 587,759. So that's a rock solid score as well. So, Havoc OS for the Poco X3 Pro is giving you good charging speeds, good battery backup. You can have Wideband L1 for your content consumption. You can have, you know, safety net for your banking applications and all security needs. Even SE Linux is enforcing. The benchmark numbers are solid. Even if you don't install a camera APK, you still have something to play with. So all in all, Havoc OS 4.10 is doing a great job on the Poco X3 Pro. You should definitely try it and let me know in the comment section what do you think about this ROM and this particular video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.